my God of all creation, I have my trust. My trust in you. I have my trust. My trust. I put my trust in you. Hallelujah. 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 Who else are you going to trust? Hallelujah. Nobody else qualifies. Put my trust in you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
to God. Nobody's worthy but him. And by the way, he's good. Matter of fact, Jesus said there's only one good. And that's God the Father. The source of all good is God. Hallelujah. I'm glad I know him for myself. Yes, God. It's personal. Yes, God. It's personal. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. He helps us.
Okay, good. You, you took the long way home, but we got there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do it. 
glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, he can. Yes, he will. Yes, Lord. He'll fight the battle. Just keep still. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He can and he will. Yes, he'll work it out. Hallelujah. You can work it loose? Yeah, he can work it out. He can work it out. <laughs> Glory to God. Praise God. All right, hallelujah. hallelujah. Well, here she is, Sister Ann. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Won't he work it out? Won't he work it out? Won't he work it out? Woo, glory to God. God is good and he's good all the time. Come on. You ought to give him your best praise right now. Come on, give him praise. Woo! Has God done anything for you this morning? Did he wake you up this morning? Are you in your right mind? Well, you ought to want to give him some praise. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. I can't praise him enough. I bless the Lord. Oh, at all times, his praises shall continually be in my mouth. And Sister Minister Jones beautifully taught the Sunday school lesson this morning. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He is good, and he is good all the time. Hallelujah. Well, come on, let's work. Let me welcome, help you, help me welcome my internet audience before I get all, I'm just all wound up. Come on, let's welcome my internet audience. Let's give them a BLCC welcome this morning. Woo! Glory to God. Welcome to our service. We want to thank you for viewing us this morning. Praise God. We pray that you've been blessed by our praise and worship. What a praise and worship. Praise God. And he can work it out for you as well. Praise God. But you got to trust him. You got to believe it and believe that he can do it for you. We want to again say thank you. You will never be the same. Praise God. You won't be disappointed. Keep listening for the word of God. For my healed man of God. We want to say thank you, hallelujah, again for work, watching and viewing us. Come on, everybody. Let's give God a praise for our internet audience. Woo! Glory to God. I don't know about you, but I dare you to give him some praise this morning. Glory to God. In the good times, praise him. In the bad times, praise him. In the rough times, praise him. When it's all well, praise him. When it's not well, praise him. We ought to praise him, praise him in everything. Give thanks unto the Lord. Come on, let's give him the praise this morning. Woo! Glory to God. Glory to God. Will you begin to praise him? Praise God. Hallelujah. It's already done. It's already done. Whatever you need this morning, it's already done. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Lift your hands all over the building. Woo! Glory to God. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Something good, real good, is going to happen to you today. Woo, do you receive that? Well, come on, act like you got it right now. Woo! Um. Glory to God. Come on, we can do better than that. Woo! Oh my, if someone walked up to you and said, you have a million dollars in the bank, it's already written in your name, one million dollars. Just go to the bank and draw it out. How would you act? Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, you may be seated. I'm telling you, I'm just so excited about what God is doing. He's done so much for us. We just can't praise him enough. If we had a million tongues, it wouldn't be enough to praise him. Well, praise God. These are our announcements this morning. Hallelujah. Our children's ministry will meet today. woo Hallelujah. Thank God for our children's ministry. Praise God. You will go back. We have some anointed and appointed teachers. They'll have a curriculum ready for you this morning. Praise God. We thank God for our children's ministry. Praise God. And all of our teachers, praise God. We bless God for them. Thank God for our entire youth department. Praise God. Praise God. The Clear Creek, the Clear Springs High School, 
graduating class of 2018 proudly announces commencement Saturday, June 2nd, 7.30 in the evening at the Challenger Columbia Center, or Stadium, praise God, in case of inclement weather, admission by ticket only. Praise God. And our graduate is Sister Caitlin Lachey Cooper. Woo! Stand up, Lachey, so they know who you are. God, Caitlin. Woo! Praise God for Caitlin. Hallelujah. Praise God. She will be graduating. Praise God. And Caitlin's graduation celebration will be held today. Praise God. Hallelujah. In the home hometown Heroes Park Gym. Praise God. And it's from 3 p.m. until 5.30 p.m. That address is 1001 East League City Parkway here in League City. So congratulations, Caitlin. Praise God. Right, Caitlin. We honor you this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God for our graduate. Hallelujah. I want to remind you, you make your contributions before and after service with your debit or your credit card in our bookstore. Also, you can give on your tablets or your smartphones through the app Give Love Fi. Give Love Fi. It's wonderful. We want to thank all of you that use it. Praise God. The list for the interfaith care and needs is posted in the bookstore as well as the fellowship hall. We want to thank each and every one of you for being a blessing to those in need. Pastor and I every week like to thank all of you for being a blessing to those in need. We never know when we're going to need. So thank you for being a blessing to those in need. Hallelujah. Our regular schedule services here at the church, Sunday school is at 9 a.m. Our morning worship is at 10 a.m. Every second and fourth Sunday is our children's ministry, which is today. woo <laughs> Praise God. Our teens ministry will be next Tuesday. Praise God. Tuesday is our midweek service at 7 p.m. Thursday, we have a noonday class. And Friday at 6 p.m. is prayer. Praise God. And we want to thank all of you that make an effort to come to prayer. We're praying for souls around the globe. We're praying for BLCC. We're praying for your families. And we just, it's just a wonderful time. Our nation, our president, praise God. It's a wonderful time. So if you can, it's available to you. And we want to say thank you for coming and thank uh, Sister Ella for helping Pastor out. Praise God. She does an excellent job. So we want to thank her. Praise God for helping Pastor. Praise God during this time of prayer. Praise God. Praise God. Well, that ends our announcements right now. Now we'd like to meet, greet, and welcome all of our first-time visitors. If we have any first-time visitors, would you please stand to be recognized? All of our first-time visitors. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Glory to God. Welcome. Come on, give them some love. Come on, give them some love. You. Woo! So good to have you with us this morning. Good to give have you. Some love. Give them some love. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. Glory to God. Woo, praise God. Yes. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> praise God. Praise God. Well, on behalf of Pastor Douglas, as you can see, we are hugging family here. Praise God. On behalf of Pastor Douglas and myself and the VLCC family, we would like to welcome you to our church. We want to say thank you for choosing VLCC this morning. Praise God. This is a place of hope and victory in a difficult world for all people. Pastor just teaches victory here. Victory, victory, victory. We win. That's my saying. We win. Everything attached to us win. And you win as well. We want to say thank you. You will. Praise God. We have a saying. If you come through those doors for the first time, ma'am, sir, you'll never be the same. Oh, my, look, at, after today, after this experience, you will never be the same. Brother Darrell, are these some of your guests? Praise God. You're... Oh, praise the Lord. Well, that's your sister. Glory to God. Well, sister, girl, you'll never be the same. Praise God. We want to say thank you for visiting with us today. Praise God. I'm going to get my hug in a little bit. You know, I, like, I love the hug. Praise God. But if you would take those cards you received, fill them out, take it to our bookstore. We have a gift for you as a token of saying thank you for visiting with us today. Come on, everybody. Let's give God a praise for our visitors. Welcome. Good to have you. Praise God. And as always, we're so glad to have 
Brother Darrell prays with us. Glory to God. He's, he's just visited us. And, come on. I said, look, there, Brother Darrell again today. Praise God. Well, we thank God for you visiting with us also today. Come on, let's one more time give God a praise for our visit. We appreciate you visiting us. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. We have a, a, a special announcement. I want you to put your hands together and receive this handsome young man, Brother Michael Wilrich. Woo-hoo! All right, Mike. Glory to God. Come on, Brother Mike. Praise God. Good. All right. First, giving honor to God, Pastor, Bless you. the VLCC family and friends. Good afternoon. I'm Brother good Mike, good probably good the most fired person up here. But it's all good. Pastor Key me. It's all good. Praise good. the Lord. Uh, I want to talk to y'all about a special day that's coming up, Pastor's birthday. And it's going to be on June the 24th when we celebrate it. Now. We want to bring all of our monies. We want to have all of our stuff together. We want to show yeah. Pastor how much we love him. Praise and I'm going to tell you, y'all, with Pastor, uh, look, I got to tell y'all this story. When we first got in this building, we had to cut the ceiling tiles right for the speakers and everything that we had to hang from the ceiling. <laughs> so Pastor, look, we have never cut ceiling tile ever. Oh, we don't know nothing about cutting ceiling tile. No, no. So Pastor come in, he looks up. He said, well, brothers, pretty good. But y'all cut a square hole for a round peg. <laughs> we didn't know. So we went back and we cut them to pastor's expectations. And we do know his expectations are high. He yeah. told us to, we, he says he, uh, he inspects what he expects. Yeah. Exactly. So I was like, okay then, pastor. <laughs> so we go from cutting ceiling tile to being a sound guy to doing everything else that we need to do. And Pastor, look here, he teaches us, and he's right there showing us how to do it the whole way. He's just not barking all the say to get on up the, up the ladder and go and do that. Because y'all look, it's 15 feet up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I ain't, look, man, it's a long way down, Pastor. <laughs> but look, I, I don't want to hold y'all any longer, but look. We want to have our stuff together. We want to show Pastor how much we love him because, look, he looks after us. And look here, I'm going to tell you, when you ain't praying for yourself, he's praying for you the whole time. For you, your family, and everything that's attached to you. Listen, everything he does, everything he, I mean, the the insight, oh, my God. Y'all, look, I wasn't even thinking about being a sound guy or doing anything with nothing. I just wanted to look. Sit out there in the audience. Right. Let me get the word. I go back and deal with the word. Just work it out. Man, next thing you know, I'm like, okay, Pastor, you want me to do what? <laughs> and he sent me to a sound uh, thing, a yeah. sound class that time. Mm-hmm. Incredible insight. Yeah. The shepherd knows where to put the sheep. Yeah. Trust your pastor. He knows what he's doing when he's doing it. Yeah. He's straight cut from the heart of God. Right. So look. Trust your pastor and you prosper. Amen? Amen. So on June the 24th, let's get our stuff together. We just not going to just come, you know, any kind of way. We're going to really show pastor how much we love him. Amen? Amen. 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 We'll see you on the 24th. And y'all, you know it's going to be some food. So be ready to eat. Amen? And it's going to be good. All right. Y'all be ready. Be blessed. Love you. See you later. Praise God. Come on, let's give God a praise for Brother Mike this morning. Woo-hoo! Praise God. Mark your calendars, mark your calendars, mark your calendars. We want to have so pastor and honor him that day and just give him the best birthday he's ever had. Praise God. Oh, I'd just like to thank all of you for praying for pastor and for, for interceding for us. And it's just a blessing to have people praying for us. And we know you. We feel the prayers. We thank you. Because he is healed, y'all. He's healed. He's healed. He's healed. He's healed. He is healed. Praise God. We're going to keep saying it until we see it. Keep saying it until we see it. Well, praise God. I want you to put your hands together for one more special announcement this morning. For, from another, we have our handsome men this morning. Praise God. I want you to put your hands together for this handsome young man, Brother Marvin Carter. All right, Brother Marvin. Praise God. I call him a preacher. Yeah, not you. 
<laughs> give an honor to my God, my pastor, my pastor's wife and family, and also giving honor to all the saints and friends out here today. Uh, the primary reason I'm here, uh, up here today, is that I'm making a solicitation for corporate prayer for our pastor. Okay? We all know the pastor is being challenged. Okay, but we also know who our source is, and we also know that God can heal him. Yeah. We know that God can yeah. heal him right now. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, yeah. this corporate prayer uh, is not a forced prayer, okay? It's something that you believe in. It's something that you want to do to get something accomplished. Amen? Yeah. Um, we know that there is agreement yeah. in prayer. Okay, and we know that it's real, yeah. okay? But before I get off into any specifics about corporate prayer, let me just share with you a little background about corporate prayer and what corporate prayer is, yeah. okay? What is corporate prayer? Corporate prayer is a term uh, that is used to describe coming together and praying yeah. as one. Okay, yeah, we know that there are many biblical references in the Bible where a group of people came together, okay, and prayed. Yeah. And when they did that, they got things accomplished. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. One of my one of my favorite scriptures is uh, Matthew 18, 19 to 20. Yeah. Okay, basically it has to do with an agreement. Mm -hmm. So what I want to do, I want to read that so I don't miss telling you exactly what it says, yeah. okay? It says, again, I tell you that if two of you on earth agrees about anything you ask for, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three come together in my name, there am I with them. Yeah. Jesus is right in the mix yeah. of corporate prayer. Yeah. Now, corporate prayer can be used to bring about many different things. It can be used to bring about encouragement. It can be used to bring about unity of purpose. Mm -hmm. It can be used to bring about worship mm -hmm. and also repentance. Yeah. But what we're going to use it for is to bring about unity of purpose. Yeah. We got a specific purpose here, yeah. okay? Yeah. And let me tell you what our purpose is. And our purpose is for a miraculous healing for our pastor yeah. right now. Right now. Yes, sir. right now, there are many biblical principles of corporate prayer. But what I want to do is just share with you about five of those principles. And when you are in the midst of your corporate prayer, you need to incorporate these particular principles. These principles are desperation, focus, one voice, mm -hmm. invoking the presence, mm -hmm. and agreement. So let me expound on these just a little bit. Desperation, mm -hmm. okay? Right now, when all else fails, yeah. what do we do? We tend to get into a desperate mode. We right. tend to want this to happen, that to happen. So we're totally desperate, okay? Mm -hmm. So what are we desperate for? We are desperate for pastors, miracles, healing, right now. Right so now. when you're praying, you make sure that you bring that desperation into the midst of it all, okay? Yeah. And then I mentioned focus. Focus is one of the principles. Mm -hmm. Powerful prayer is focused prayer. Yeah. And I can't yeah. reiterate this enough. What are we praying for? Pastors, Pastors miracle, miracle healing yeah. from his head to his toes. Amen? Yeah. Okay, yeah. and then I mentioned another principle. One voice. We all are going to be on one accord. Yeah. We all are going to be on one accord. We're going to be on one accord at a set time, and I'll tell you what that time is. Yeah. We're going to be on one accord for his miracle healing. Amen? Yeah. And then, two, I said invoking presence. Yeah. Yeah. What do I mean by that? Bottom line, according to Matthew 18, 19 through 20, okay, mm -hmm. Jesus is already in the mix. Yeah. 
So we want to invite God in. We want to invite the Holy Spirit yeah. in. So when we're going through this corporate prayer, we got all the Godheads right there in the mix. Yeah. We got ourselves in the mix. Yeah. So what's happening? We're all in total agreement. Yeah. And that's pretty awesome right yeah. there. That's now, that's let's good. kind of sum some things up real briefly. Okay. What is our goal? What are we praying for? We are praying for Pastor Douglas's miracle healing, miracle healing from the head to the toes until it manifests, right okay? Now. Yeah. now, we all know that when we go before Pastor Douglas for healing, what are some of the things he's saying? What scriptures are you standing yeah. on? Yeah. So what, what I want to yeah. give to you, there are about four scriptures. Pastor probably have many scriptures, oh, yeah. but I'm going to leave with you four scriptures, okay, and that we're going to stand on during our corporate prayer time. You may want to jot these down. And I'll read them to you as well. It's Psalms 103.3, which says, Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Yes. Psalms 118.17, I will not die but live and will proclaim what the Lord has done. Yes. Matthew 8.17, this was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yes. And the last one is 1 Peter 2 through 24. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. Amen. Yes. So when is this corporate prayer going to occur? It's going to occur every day from 11 to 2 p.m. until the miracle is manifested. Now, I know some of you, you've got jobs and you're going to be at work. Amen. Some of you are going to be in the mall shopping. Some of you are going to, may even be at the doctor's office or whatever the case may be. Okay. But nevertheless, I know there are many ladies out here that can multitask. Okay. So I'm asking you brothers as well to multitask during that particular period. If, you, if you're busy, multitask. You can pray in your native tongues. You can also pray in tongues as well. Okay, You can pray silent, but whatever you do, you want to lift the pastor up. You want to stand on these particular scriptures as well. Amen? Yeah. Okay, right now, you know, I said the prayer time is from 11 to 2. Look at the time right now. And you know that's a blessing. So real quickly, let's just pray. Let's, let's pray right now. Okay? Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, we thank, thank you, Father, God. because if we can't do it, we know that you can do it. We bring you right now in the midst of all, Father. We come together as one, Father, as focus, Father. We're praying for pastors, miracle healing right now in Jesus' name. Father, we just give you the glory and praise and honors for it, Father. We're in total agreement with this healing, and we just praise you for that. We know, Father, that nobody can do this but you. Father, we know that nobody can do it for you. So therefore, we give you all the glory and all the praise, Father. Father, we're standing on your word. We're standing on Psalms 103.3. We're standing on Psalms 118.17. We're standing on Matthew 8.17. We're standing on 1 Peter, Father, 2.24 right now for my pastor's healing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, just remember this, y'all. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Our pastor. My pastor, who I've known for 31 years. <laughs> I've sit up under his teaching for 31 years, and I'm still here. Yeah. Through his teaching, I've been truly blessed. And there are many of you out there can say the same thing. Yeah. There are many of you who have been healed in many, many, many yeah. different situations. Amen? Yeah. So then it's our time to stand up for the pastor. Yeah. It's our time to stand on Satan's head. It's our time to kick butt. It's yeah. our time to poop or get off the pot. It's our time. Yeah. It is our time to get what we want. And right now, we want our pastor totally healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise God. Praise God. Ooh, we want to thank Brother Marvin. Praise God. Wasn't he all excited? 
Praise God, praise God. But we're standing one as one for pastor's healing. Praise God. It's already done, y'all. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done. All we got to do is see it in the manifestation, in the physical glory to God. Glory to God. He is healed, y'all. And we want to thank all of you for, if you, you don't have to pray for the whole from 11 to 2, just to continue, but if, between that time, 11, if you can do it at 11, somebody might do 11.30 or 12, whatever, we just want to be in agreement and on one accord, everybody praying the same thing. Hallelujah. Well, praise God, everybody stand up. For those that are not standing, praise God. I want you to put your hands together, and I want you to shout to the top of your voices. I want you to receive a heal, Pastor, right now in the name of Jesus, Pastor Douglas. Woo! Well, the Lord is. He is good. For his mercy, his loving kindness, his tender mercies, his steadfast love, his hasid agape, his covenant love, it endureth forever. Hallelujah. Well, I'm glad I'm on somebody's mind. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And you, you reap what you sow. My whole life has been wrapped around prayer. Most of you know that when I, when I was uh, coming down here, I used to come here every morning, uh, early. Uh, sometimes stay here two and three and four hours, just walking the floor and praying in the spirit for the church, for you, and for different situations and circumstances because God is the source. That's the bottom line to all this. God is the source. And then he's the source of all good. You know, don't ever get that twisted. He is the source of all good. They even tried to call Jesus good. He said, oh, uh -uh, hold up. There's only one. And that's God, Jehovah, the Father. So the source of all good is God. So I appreciate you having me on your mind Amen. and uh, pray in faith because I'm already convinced Amen. it's a settled deal. Yes. It's, it's done. Yes. Flat out, downright, done. Yes. You know, I've been preaching faith yes. since you've been knowing me. Yes. And one thing I know is that the word of God has never lost a battle. Not ever. There's, there's no substitute for the word. Hallelujah. Uh, there's no pill uh, that's a match for the word. Hallelujah. And so, you know, the devil going to always shoot at you. But make sure your gun is bigger. That's what, God, that's what, that's what Moses, you know, the Pharaoh's magician, brought their little rods out and they turned the snakes and he threw his rod down and became a bigger snake. You just make sure that your snake is bigger. Yeah. And uh, swallow up the devil's mess. Hallelujah. I was in Dayton yesterday uh, at my brother-in-law's uh, 60th birthday. They, was, they had a surprise party for him on yesterday. He was surprised too. Yeah, and uh, he was telling us about how the day before, the devil just challenged him. I mean, just tried to mess with him personified. And he said, you know, the thought began coming to his mind about, you know, how his sisters all died young. And so trying to put in his head, he was going to die young too. But he said he, he got the victory over that. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hallelujah. You got to believe that there are no generational curses attached to you. Hallelujah. Just because somebody else doing it don't mean you have to do it. 
ain't dying because you dying. Go ahead on, praise God, but I ain't going with you. Hallelujah. So I appreciate it. Um, come into agreement with me? Because it's a done deal. I share with you how God sent a man from Argentina to confirm the same thing that I've been saying about total healing for my body. And, uh, but I hadn't stopped. You can tell that. Uh, the devil's not going to get the victory here at all. Praise God. Because uh, I'm, a, I'm a bold person. I'm in your face kind of person. Especially in the face of the devil with his crazy self. Hallelujah. And so, pray in faith. Matter of fact, the message today is going to be about faith. Hallelujah. And, uh, uh, I, I see the end. I'm just walking out the journey. I see the end. I'm just walking out the journey. You know, we all have journeys that we have to walk out. And you can't even choose it. You just got to adapt to it and deal with it and stay in faith. Hallelujah. Well, Father, thank you for the privilege to be in the house of God and to hear you speak. We know you have a word for your people today, O God. So we yield to the Holy Ghost to bring out what is your mind. Thank you, Father, every heart that hears the heart of good soil. And the word that they spoke on today will not fall to the ground unfulfilled. But they shall yield much fruit in the lives and hearts of these your people. And we'll leave this place not challenged but changed in your presence. Holy Spirit, always I stand before you as a bad for the priest. Whatever you want to say on today, I will quote heaven. I will say exactly what you want me to say. All I ask to do one thing, you promise, confirm your word. And Lord, make thyself known in this house today by stretching forth thy hand to heal and that signs and wonders and miracles may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. And we're going to praise in advance, O oh God. For everything we're going to receive right now by the Spirit, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Maybe see the presence of the Lord. Turn me to the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. I know we didn't do meet and greet, but you know, we had a different flow this morning. You already know everybody. Hallelujah. Except my brother's uh, sister and, and, and family, but you already been introduced to them. So praise God. You can see them after service. Hallelujah. But right now, I sense it's time to get into the word. God wants to speak. Hallelujah. Hebrews 11. Go over to God. That's been going off all during service. Is that somebody's phone? Praise God. How about silent or vibrate? Go over to God. We need to be focused. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11, and I want to deal with that first verse. The Lord began to deal with me about that on Tuesday. And so I haven't got a release to go anywhere else. So we're going to stay right there. All I want to read are the first two words. The first two words. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, let, 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 let me say this also. Please do not pray no feeling sorry for me prayers. Keep them to yourself. I don't need that. I need faith prayer. Expectation of change. Not, not sympathy. All right? I'm going to tell you where I am. Okay? I'm a warrior. All right? So I need warriors praying for me. Not feeling sorry for me. 
I'm good. I am good. It's always been determined. The outcome has always been determined. All right? So I just felt impressed to just say that. I, 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 I don't need that. That don't help me. Hallelujah. You pray with an attitude. A devil busting upside his little nappy head prayer. Glory to God. You can tell I hate him. No, 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 no. I know the symptoms are just a camouflage. Trying to hide the truth. And the truth is, I'm healed. Hallelujah. That's why I've not voiced or said what it is. Because everybody's not going to be praying in faith. Some will be, some will be sympathizing and some just going to be broadcasting. Hallelujah. So a very select group, my wife, my daughter, and a very select group I count on my fingers know what's going on with me. And that's on purpose. Because I don't need no negative flow coming at me and wrong words being spoken. Hallelujah. By well-meaning people, but don't have no faith. Because they're looking at the circumstances and not looking at the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So your past is good. Don't, 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 don't think I'm tripping. I might trip or slip, you know, trying to get down these steps or something. I told my guys, though, that they've been real concerned about me. So I, I, I made them a promise. I said, from now on, what I do, just to keep you off from getting nervous, I go down the side where the rail is. It just don't feel right. A man holding your hand coming up and down those steps. No. No. I'm a man. We don't want to get it twisted now. So I'm going to walk down the side over here. Okay? That just don't feel right, man. <laughs> How, <laughs> so so they, they feel better not knowing that I'll be able to just, you know, grab a hold of something in the meantime. Your legs are very important to balance. I didn't realize that until, you know, I, I went through this through this, this challenge, and your legs are not as strong as they used to be, and it's amazing how much they have to do with your balance. And so uh, I just have to use wisdom in the meantime, and I'll just roll down that side over there, but I ain't holding no man's hand, you know. No. We ain't going out like that. I know they mean well. See, that, 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 that's why I can't understand why two, two old rusty hairy men will live, live in the bed together. <laughs> you got a beard and I got a beard. That's, that's messed up, man. <laughs> but I thank God for my wife and my daughter. They watch out for me. They take care of they, her husband and her daddy. They watch me like a hawk, too. They don't, their eyes don't leave me. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I thank God for them. You know, they, they've been a blessing to me. God's going to reward them even more than what I'm, I'm doing for them helping me, praise God. Because this is so temporary. So temporary. So temporary. First two words. Huh? When, when, when faith? When? 
Now. Faith. Which means what? Right now. We need something to happen now. And the reason why God put that in my spirit is because when you read about the life of Jesus and his ministry, there was no waiting. Now, I don't know how we got in, in, into this mindset of waiting, but there's no scripture for it. Everybody Jesus ministered to, there was an instant. Or in the self-same hour, manifestation. And if it didn't happen, like, like the man that uh, was blind, he prayed for him one time. He said, I, I see like trees. He didn't, he didn't let that man go. He prayed for him again right there on the spot until his eyes filled up. What no go home with hope. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. See, we've been sending people home with hope, but no manifestation. We've been sending people home with hope, but no manifestation. They still got the same symptoms. And according to what the scripture teaches in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they should have left when we prayed for them. But if you don't have a now faith mentality, you're going to always be like the, like, like the candy now uh, and later. <laughs> and it seems like most people have been choosing later. No, God said you need to change your mentality to expect him to move for you right now. What we're waiting for. Kind of like uh, Pharaoh, when Moses came to him, uh, they had a plague of frogs. And uh, Moses came to him and, and said to the Lord, you know, uh, when do you want the frogs to leave? He said, tomorrow. So he spent one more night with the frogs. If I got an opportunity to get rid of the frogs right now, We having frog legs for supper. <laughs> but he chose one more night with the frogs. If a person comes to the power line and they're hurting, they don't want to go away talking about one, one more night with the pain. They want that pain going right now. When you talk to your body and tell it in the name of Jesus, I command you to be here, pain, go. You want that pain to go right now. You don't want to go to bed and wake up and still hurt. It's time out being professional sick people. Hospitals are full of saints. See, when, when we're going to put the word and God on the spot and believe for God to move right now. You know, it takes just as much faith to believe God for, for now as it does for later. Since you believe, you may as well believe for God to move for you right now. But then the Bible said, what? Faith comes by what? what? How does it come? And hearing what? Word. Whose word? word? Not Pookin' them, not Ray Ray, not Bubba, not Sequita. <laughs> Faith for what God promised must be in what he said. That's why we teach so much in this house about what? Confession. Confession of the word. The scripture said, meditate this word what? Day and night. Having his word on your lips all the time. I call it hammer time. 
The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, it says that, that the word of God is a hammer. Breaking in pieces. See, sometimes you, you just got to hammer this thing. You can't just, sometimes you just can't go one or two times and, and then th that's it. Uh-uh. That means continuous, don't let up, stay with it. Hammer time. Say it and keep saying it. And then say it again. And then say it again. And then say it again. And by the way, say it again. Oh yeah. And say it again. And since you're still saying it, say it again. I can't tell you how many times I've quoted Hebrew scriptures. I've quoted them every day as a way of life anyway. I figured out the Bible says the book of Proverbs. It said his word is life because I what? Found it. And what else? Yeah. To some of my flesh. Oh. Excuse me? Oh. Now notice that he didn't, he didn't even say being healed. He said be healthy. How about 3 th John what? Verse 2? Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest what? Prosper and what else? Be in what? So if you're in health, you don't have to be healed. If you're in health, you don't have to be healed. We've been settling for, settling for being healed. Why not, why not go for healthy? Everything working. Whole by the wholeness. Perfection. Live long, live strong. Young it up. Nothing get old but clothes and mine. My clothes don't even get old. They've been informed. Stay new. I still got sports jacket I'm wearing that's at least 25 years old. Which is a blessing because that, that means I hadn't changed size much. Now, now I'm having to you know, you know, try to get some weight back because when I went through this process, a lot of, I had a lot of fluid on me, so my, once I got it off, I, I went down. Which I'm, I'm not really complaining. It's just that I got so many clothes at the other size, I don't want to pay to have my altar. <laughs> just to be blunt about it and straight, straight up about it. And so, but I don't want to gain all I had back because I still want to remain fine. Let's just keep it real. Let's just keep it real. Hello. Why you think she hooked up with me? Not just because I'm intelligent and good looking, but I'm fine too. And you know, when, when, I, when I counsel in marriage, I always tell them, you know, make sure that you try to maintain the same size you were 20 years from now. So you'll still be attractive to your mate. Because you don't want them looking somewhere else because there has been an expansion of you. Now, if you're expanding together, then one can't talk about the other one. <laughs> so I want her eyes to always be on me. And I want to keep my eyes on her. So she's been primarily the same size uh, since we've been, been married. This is 40, 40, 42 two years. Uh, and, uh, you know, 
that's one of the things we've always been, been conscious about, you know, is, is maintaining our appearances so we'd always be attracted to each other. You know, because, you know, I'm the king of my castle and she's the queen. Hello, somebody. And we keep that clear. You know, even when, when my mother could come to my house, when my mother was living, she always knew I was the king of the house, she was the queen. She knew I had a certain chair, and she didn't sit in it. I'm serious. When, when she came to my house, she was my guest. She could come to my house tell me what to do. That's my house. Now, if I, at her house, that's different. But at my house, uh-uh, no, mama, no mama. Hello, somebody. And so, you know, whenever dinner served, my plate was supposed to be the first one to prepare. Uh-oh. You're not supposed to have your, your man sitting there, you serving everybody else, and your man the last one to get his plate. You wrong for that, sister. Oh, shun that, shun the little can't get a hundred dollars civic. <laughs> Praise him. Boy, well, the rumble went through the house then. I ain't studying him. Fix his own plate. I work just like him. I'm just trying to help you. <laughs> to be told, praise the Lord. Yeah. No, no waiting. Let's believe God for when? Now. Now go to Matthew chapter 8. Matthew 8 chapter. Now faith. Hammer time. That means you got what said what? Over and over. He said, the, it, a hammer, it breaks the rock. Most of the time, it's, you, you're not going to break the, a rock with one lick. You ever saw a jackhammer? Yeah. I said, when they, I said, working on the street, and they have that, they have that uh, air, air car hooked up to it. And that thing is just doing this. Yeah. It's hammer time. Yeah. And it's breaking up concrete. Yeah. But it didn't break it all up with one, one lick. That's why you got to keep hitting that thing. And you can't get tired. And you can't get tired. And you can't get tired. Pump your own self up. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Talk to yourself. Well, at midnight, most folks sleep. And so you got to talk to yourself. But most times the devil waits till the midnight hour. I'm going to wait till the midnight hour. <laughs> the, that's the greatest amount of the money activity is in the night season after midnight. That's a true statement. That's why you encounter your worst challenges at night. And you got to be willing to war even when you're sleeping. Hallelujah. You might have to war all night. See, hammer time. But you do what you got to do to get the victory. You can sleep later. But right now, you want him off of you. Get off me! Hallelujah. Don't let him intimidate you with his foolishness. The word of God is greater than anything the devil got to offer. I don't care what name they give it. The word of God has no match. Remember that? The word of God has never lost a battle. 
the word of God demands obedience from everything. That's why you got to get it in you so it can come out of you. Get it what? In you so it can come what? Out of you. You can't draw water out of an empty well. Matthew chapter 8. This story was about a uh, centurion that had a sick servant. And uh, he went to Jesus about his servant. And at first, Jesus was going to go to his house. But then the man felt unworthy. And watch this now. He wasn't even a Jew. If you notice in, in the four Gospels, the ones that seemed to have the most faith were those who were not Jews. But see, a lot of people that's in church that's religious. Amen. Jesus had his greatest problem with religious people. We don't do it like that here. We've been doing it like this for the last 20 years. Well, it's time for a change. My, my, my granddaddy's name is on the cornerstone. Your granddaddy dead. And you're going to die right there, too, if you don't go somewhere where that's, where that's some life. And the worst people to, to train are religious folk. Because they think they already know how it's supposed to go. Don't shut me down because I'm preaching real good. And Lord, especially if, they, if, if they're older than you, I've been here longer than you. But you know, you, you, you can be an old fool. That's what the young man said in the book of Job. He said, I didn't want to speak because I'm a young man. All, this, all, this, all you guys are older. So I, I felt like I'd be out of place, but I, I'm not hearing no wisdom coming out of you all. Age just tells how long you've been here. Don't mean you got no sense. <laughs> Where did that come from? That don't mean you know nothing. You know God can speak to a baby? To a child? And so he, he, he said, I don't want to speak, but the spirit in me won't let me, won't let me just sit here any longer and not say something. Because the road y'all headed down ain't right. I'm not hearing the right stuff coming out. But religious folks, Jesus had his worst problem with religious people. That's why you find out happening from church to church. Yeah. If they can't have their way there, they go somewhere else. Can't have their way there, they go somewhere else. Yeah. That's why I want to take a rank sent off the street or a dope, or a dope head, get saved. Yeah. He's easier trained than a religious person. Because he don't have to undo nothing. Right. Remember when I first got saved? Born, I was raised up in a certain denomination. I had to unlearn a bunch of stuff. Because yeah. I had been brought up in that environment of this is the way it, it is, and then I would begin to read the word and find out it's not the way it is. Somehow I was misinformed. So I had to unlearn before I could learn. That's why I said go to the highways and byways and compel men to come. Go get somebody out there that don't even know me. You would stand a better chance with them than a religious person. A religious person know, know all the cliches, all the right words and everything. And they're going to try to tell you how to, how to run your church the way it was run at the church they came from. You better get up out of here. There's only one, one head. Anything with more than one head is what? A monster. Hallelujah. I know I'm straight and acting in your face, but it's the truth anyhow. And, we, and see, the problem is 
We live in a nation that's a democracy. And in a, demo in a democracy, everybody wants to vote and have an opinion. And the Bible is a theocracy. God speaks in the story. God never asks for your opinion. Ever. And you don't care if you don't like what they say either. Let me tell you how powerful theocracy is. Queen Esther had to get permission just to go talk to her own husband, who was the king. If she went in that room, it was over for her. But in this nation, especially America, we disrespect the thought that's so, so, so bad. It's unreal. And wonder why it doesn't working for us. The Bible says the powers that be are ordained of God. I don't care if you don't like them. You pray for them. You pray for those in authority. You don't put your mouth on them. And I know some of you here guilty. Guilty. I don't like him. God don't care if you don't like it. Hallelujah. We got one up there now. He'll say anything he ain't want to say. You talk about his mama, he'll talk about your mama. <laughs> yes, he will. He'll pull that, that little tweet out and start tweeting on you. Twiddly, 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 twiddly. <laughs> but he's getting a lot more done than a whole bunch of them were. If you just be honest, instead of being prejudiced in your thinking. Hallelujah. Look at his record. In the short time he's been up there at what he has accomplished. Whoever would have thought he would have that little crazy man. I want to sit down and talk to him now. There's a boy over in uh, North Korea. That boy is out of his mind. But God chose him. Men might have voted, but he was God's choice. And our job, according to the word of God, is to pray for him. Because when you buck God's authority, you are bucking God. When you talk about God's authority, you're talking about God. You're saying God is a dummy. He don't know who he's choosing. Well, we got quiet in it, didn't we? You pray for him. You don't have to like him. He didn't ask you to, to, to like him. He said pray for him. I lost about seven people. <laughs> you didn't know the truth. But in America, we disrespect the thought because we're a democracy. So we vote about everything. We, 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 uh, we uh, uh, have opinions. And God's a theocracy. He speaks what he has to say, and he's through with it. You can love it or lump it. He doesn't care. The bottom line is, if you don't do it, you, 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 you got issues with him. I would be on God's good side. Tell somebody, on his bad side. Hallelujah. So in other words, sometimes you, you, you just need to just keep your opinions to yourself and just shut up. Spend that time doing some corporate praying. Oh, Shanda, Shanda, Honda Civic. Hallelujah. You might not like me. I don't care. I'm the one God chose to be here. He called me to this ministry. There are no locks on the inside of these doors that won't let you out.
See, God going to take, take care of this ministry. He's been proving it. He's going to take care of us. Look at that girl. Don't she look good? She ain't slumming. Refrigerator full, both of them. Freezer full, all of them. <laughs> Cabinets full. He taking care of us. I finally retired myself from cutting my syrup in my yard. Marvin, I, I went to retirement. I finally found somebody that could cut my shrubbery, trim it the way I like it. So I pay them now. So I'm retired from your work completely. <laughs> I looked through the window at them while they're working. But, you know, you, you work the stuff right. You, you know, you, you live in a nice neighborhood like, like we're living in. You want it right, man. People pass, people pass by your house all the time. And they, they, they know what color, color you is. <laughs> yeah. So we keep our stuff nice and neat. All the time. But I had maybe get out there like, like I normally do. So, you know, wisdom said, well, just go, just go and find somebody that do it like to, like to do it. And God was so gracious. He found me somebody that do it just like I like it. I ain't have no problem paying them. At all. Because they've done a good job. It looks nice when I pass by there. Sometimes, sometimes you need to drive, drive by your own house. And look at it and see, would you live there? Hello? And if not, straighten it up. If, it, if the car ain't running, get rid of it. Yes, I said in front of the garage, up on the lift. <laughs> Clean that mess up. Order, read my lips. Order attracts wealth. Order attracts wealth. That's why I be on mic and them about getting it right. If it's the house of God, it should be done right. Hallelujah. Genesis 1, there was chaos, but by verse 3, God brought everything to order. Order attracts wealth. You know, I, 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 I even talk about even having all, all your, 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 your bills, your dollar bills, t turn the same direction. You got one, one president going one way, another president going another way. <laughs> Hello? They, they just as confused. <laughs> well, which way do we go? And clean that car out. Got them candy wrappers and hamburger wrappers and french fries on the floor. The, 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 the trunk, you can't put nothing in it. You said you're meddling now. Yes, I am. Tell my God, give me a new car. Because I, I, I'm not likely. If you're going to treat the new one like, like you're treating this one, I'm not giving you nothing. Because we're put here to be what? Managers. Hallelujah. Y'all still love the pastor? This message took a strange turn this morning. I guess y'all, well, y'all already prayed corporate prayer, so. <laughs> Listen, Timothy said, Lord, I don't feel worthy for you coming to my house. But look what he said. Go down to verse. You the verse 8. The verse 8. Amen. 
a verse. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy. Thou shouldest what? Come on my roof. But do what? But do what? Know what the Lord is saying. You only got one thing to say. The word. You only got one thing to be talking. That's the word. If you're around a lot of folk ain't talking the word, you need to, you need to excuse yourself. Because more than likely you're going to wind up talking about somebody. Which means then your, your, your friend list is going to drop off. You don't need to waste words talking about something else that's not, that's not going to build your life. He told Jesus, he said, look, I don't need to come to my house because words transcend time, distance, and matter. Words do what? Transcend time, distance, and matter. Words do what? Transcend time, distance, and matter. So it doesn't matter where I am. I can speak here in League City and get some change in China. Because words are spirit. Words are what? Spirit. Jesus said, the words I speak, they are spirit and they are life. So words are not hindered by a wall. They can go anywhere. They transcend time. This man says, so since you have the authority to speak, and saints, we too have the authority to speak. Speak the word only. 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 He said, if you just speak the word only, my servant might be healed. Uh-oh. You see, did you notice here, people of God, how convicted this man was in what he believed? How convinced he was in what he believed? He wasn't even a Jew. He said, if you, if you speak the word, my servant shall be. That's a, that's a definite article. Ain't no if and buts about it. That little brother going to get healed. Faith is not wondering. If you're wondering, you're not in faith. If you got questions, you're not in faith. Faith is convinced that it is what? Done. And it's done now. Well, I wonder, is it working? You didn't see Jesus standing there after he cursed that fig tree, waiting to see if it was working. The Bible says he said, henceforth shall no man eat of you, and walked on into the city. He didn't look back. Because the effect of his words was what he couldn't see. It was on the roots. The root system was dying, and pretty soon the head started dying. See, you're trying to see something first to believe. That's not faith. If you've got to see it first, that's not faith. The Bible says you walk by faith, not by what? Or by your five senses. If you got to touch it first, that's not faith. Faith calls those things that be what? Not as though they were. Faith is convinced. See, I'm not wondering if I'm healed. I know I'm healed. I'm convinced. That's my conviction. Hold by the hold. Perfection. Everything working. 
living long, living strong. Young it up. See, you keep your eye on the end and not on the journey. For the joy that was what? Set before him, what happened? He endured the cross. Jesus kept his eyes on the prize, on the end result, so he, he, he could endure being beat, whipped, spit on, beard pulled, holes put in. That was the journey. But the end result was us. He saw us the whole time. Hallelujah. Speak the word only. My servant shall be here. Now, go, on, go down a little further. So if he's talking anything else other than, than, than the word, uh, you might want to just be quiet. Did the Bible say, and Jesus marveled at the fact that this man had that kind of faith. Now go with me to the 13th verse. Have I said God is good yet? See, every time I'm attacked, I get encouraged. See, uh, David didn't run from the giant. He ran towards the giant. See, some of us are trying to run from the challenges. You can't outrun them. You face them. Because ain't no problem bigger than your God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ah. 13 verse. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way. And what? Don't pass that statement up. Notice here that the centurion dictated the end result. He told Jesus what to do. Faith dictates. Faith does what? Dictate. Faith dictates. He said, Lord, don't come to my house. He said, what? What do you mean, try to tell me to do? Don't come to my house. That's what I'm telling you. Just speak the word only, and then my servant shall be here. He told Jesus what to do. And the Lord turned around, and the Bible said, and he marveled. Wow. He got it. See, Big Up Joe said what? Decree a thing, what? And it shall be what? Excited. Decree it. Say it. Speak it. Open your mouth and say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord do what? That's why people come pray on time. And, and, you know, they, 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 they mean well, but they're just uninformed. They want, they, they want prayer for strength. Ain't no Bible for that. Bible says, let the weak say. Uh-oh. Let the weak do what? Say, I'm strong. See, in, jo- in Joshua 1, he said, be strong in the Lord. Empower what? His might. See, you got to say something. I am strong. I am prosperous. I am healed. I am blessed. You you have to decree those things. Open up your mouth and say so. Because everything you need has already been given. 
So watch this now. He said, as thou hast believed, the way you want it, that's the way it's going to be. Now watch this now. He said, and in the self-same hour, when? Self-same hour. Wasn't a month later? Right then. Right then. In that moment, the servant was here. Now faith. Now faith. Now faith. He didn't send that to him away with, away with some hope. He sent him away with some manifestation. We need to build our faith to a level where we begin to see what? Manifestation. Come in prayer line, pray for him. Nothing happened. Just go on and keep believing. God's faithful. He's going to hear you. And six months later, they still got the same problem. That shouldn't be. I don't like what Brother Hagin would do. When he have a, a faith revival or whatever, he wouldn't pray for nobody until the last night. He started on Sunday night and just teach the people every day to be a faith in them. And by that Friday night, they was ready. And miracles just started taking place, just like that. Just like that. Because they had that, their faith had been built to a level of what? Expectation for God to move right now. In the self-same hour. See, I'm the queen. Y'all, y'all, y'all not going to be in this corporate prayer long because I'm getting mine now. Yeah. Hallelujah. Which means what? I need to, you to expect for God to do it for me right now. Yeah. When this thing is done, It's going to be some things start happening. Because the testimony is going to build faith. See, nobody can, 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 can chew in on what's going on because I'm always the same. Well, the word is the same. Yesterday, there forever. If you say you heal, act like it. How does a healed person act? That's why I got my tickets for my vacation. I ain't been laying around the house. Come on, I'm going through. I'm going on vacation. And enjoy myself. Hallelujah. Laying in the bed. Waiting for somebody to come out and pat my hand. I hang on in that baby. The Lord understands. The Lord understands. You ain't, you ain't talking in faith. I don't need that. You don't either. We need to put a black eye on the devil. And put a hickey on, on his old nappy head. Yeah. The Bible that put the little fellow what? Under your what? Feet. Yeah. That means you ought to have, your, the, the heel of your, of your foot ought to be sore. From. Where the devil at? Right there. There he is, right there. When do you want God to move? And it may require hammer time. Will you keep saying it till you see it? 
Keep saying it till you see it. Keep saying it till you see it. Meditate this word day and night. Have you been helped today? Hallelujah. Would you stand, please? I'm just going to stop you. I don't ever finish a message. I go so far, then I stop. Pick up next time. We'll see you, we'll see you Tuesday night. Because some of you are just at the house anyway. Hello. If you come to the church, the Rockets might win. Because you got your real. <laughs> I was in Dayton yesterday, but I, I was among a whole crowd of, of Rocket fans. I was, I stood my ground. <laughs> Just talking about, I said, look, you better go and tell them to, to get their fishing gear ready. Because they're about to go fishing. <laughs> the season is over. That's good. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. No, people got Whatever you focus on, expands. Whatever you give time to, come to you. Whatever you focus on, expands. And whatever you give time to, comes to you. So, Mama Audrey, them new knees, you give time to talking to them, new knees coming to you. Because God got a warehouse with no back in it. And it's full of body parts. May as well get your pair of knees out of there. And let the Holy Ghost put them on you. And then you can just slide across the floor. Hello? Hallelujah. I don't want to assume anybody, everybody's born again, but I do want to give the invitation. If you're not born again, or you're out of fellowship with the Lord, or there's out of baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues, as the Spirit gives utterance, or maybe you need a church home, Lord have mercy. Look what you're standing in. Yeah. You in the church. Yeah. You hook up. See, I came out, uh, uh, the denomination was, well, they had a song. They said, uh, this is the church of God in Christ. This is the church of God in Christ. Well, you can't join it. You got to be born in it. This is the church of God in Christ. And, and they meant that too. You couldn't join. You got you, you, you to be born in it. I said, okay then. I didn't join. <laughs> I was a rebel. Yeah, I, I, I didn't go the way of. I went the way of the Spirit. And did what God told me to do, and that's why you're standing inside this, this house right now, because this was God's idea, not man's. But if you need, if you need a good church, people got, you know, this is a good church. This is a good church. You will live up in here. You will live and not die. You will live long, you live strong. Maybe you just need prayer, but if you're not born again, if you're out of with the Lord, is that baptism in the Holy Spirit, need a church home or just need prayer, in Jesus' name, come now. We're going to minister to you. It's, 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 it's a good day to get your knees met. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, the school year is almost over, isn't it?
That, that must be a teacher or something. <laughs> Looks like y'all got it going on. It's time to give. <laughs> I'm going to come down around the side, brother. I want you to hold my hand. <laughs> oh, a female can. That, that looks normal. But uh, uh, we can't have this other stuff going on. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. If you're in an envelope, raise your hand. Our earth is in the house that they will assist you. We figure about $100,000 to a day ought to be a good offer. What do you think, brother? Be fantastic, all right. Well, my account would say a hundred thousand would be a fantastic. So I'm agreeing with him. So uh, if you want to write that check, no, go to the bank first and get cashiers. <laughs> I need a uh, book of Matthew. Tell my side to cross that down. Out there. We're having church up in here. That's good water, man. Peace level, peace level of nine. Costs a little money, but it's good for you. Matthew chapter six. I got one one phrase to give you. One phrase to give you. Give us this day. Our daily bread. That means then that before you was born, God put provision on every day of your life. So you ain't got to worry about tomorrow. It's already been covered. Now the issue is don't get on the curse and then cut off the provision. You say, how do I get on the curse? By not obeying the scripture in the area of giving. You can't keep the tithe because that's not yours. You're holding God's money. When you hold God's money, he's going to handle you. And one thing you don't want to do, you, you don't want God to start blowing on your stuff. Because when God blows, it disappears. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when you bring God your tithes and offerings, then provision for every day of your life is in place. And it keeps flowing endlessly. The money just keeps on coming. How? Endlessly. Uh, team, are, are your cabinets empty? See, she always got food. And she's always cooking food for people, too. You ain't going to go to her house and not find, find something. She cooked for herself, a little folk, too. Yeah, but God makes sure she always got what? Food. Yeah. Our cabinet stay full. But, you know, she, she likes to bake. And all part about it, I don't eat, I don't, I don't eat, eat none of it. I, I never have. I'm not a cake person. You know. I might eat, uh, she, she'll do the cupcakes. I eat one hot, fresh out of the oven, and that's it. I'm through. I'm through with it. You know. But she bakes all the time, and, and so stuff just come back to her. She go to the grocery store and get all kind of favor. All kind of sales and things because what? She's a giver. She sold food, she get plenty of it. Because our kids are full of stuff. So give us when? This day. Our what? So God's already determined you're supposed to have enough. Somebody said over the top. Over the top. Abundant provision. Abundant provision. Hallelujah. You receive that? Then bring it in the house. I believe I believe we can do this. Hey, Oh, 
We decree and declare that this house is paid off in full now. All debts are canceled. God says so. In Jesus' name. And all who agree said, Now, Father, here are the gifts from your servants who honor you with their givings to ensure that the flow of provisions for their daily lives never stop flowing. The money just keep on coming endlessly in Jesus' name. And all who reset and when the game they pray. <laughs> 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 yeah. 